Hello all, this is Dr. Alsip, and in this video we will be discussing the vasculature, particularly the arteries, you need to be able to identify in this shoulder, brachial plexus, and arm session. And we will start with the arteries that participate in the posterior scapular anastomoses, so in this posterior region around the shoulder joint. And as mentioned, this is the posterior scapula, but let's figure out why we know that. Many of the muscles have been removed in order to better see the arteries, but I can still see the teres major right here, quite prominent, and the distal portions of the teres minor and the infraspinatus are still there, but the bulk of the belly has been removed. You can see the spine of the scapula right here running along this superior border, and it will extend laterally and widen into the acromion. So all the signs points to we are looking at the posterior scapular region. There are three major arteries that will supply this region. Medially, and I'm just going to outline it here, you will have the dorsal scapular artery. So the dorsal scapular artery will be more medially placed it will run down the medial border of the scapula, and this is a branch of the subclavian. Superiorly, there will be the suprascapular artery. You can see it kind of coming uh, through this region as well to supply the more superior portions and, of course, communicate with the other arteries. You can see the suprascapular nerve kind of running deep to this region here. The suprascapular artery is a branch of the subclavian artery as well. And then laterally, you can see the circumflex scapular artery, which is kind of looping into this region. And this is the odd one out, as this is a branch of the axillary artery. So you have branch, and this is, again, this is going to be more laterally placed. So you have branches from both the subclavian and the axillary arteries. So the subclavian arteries are dorsal scapular and suprascapular. And then from the axillary, you have the circumflex scapular, supplying this posterior scapular and shoulder region. Now looking at an anterior view in a rather deep dissection, you can see the brachial plexus has been removed in order to really focus in on the axillary artery. At the lateral margin of the first rib, which would be kind of around this region right here, you will have the transition of the subclavian artery into the axillary artery, which is what we're dominantly seeing right here. The, um, the dominant supply of this region is the axillary artery, and it will supply this axillary region, sending branches uh, inferiorly, and then also importantly towards the scapula. There are a lot of branches of the axillary artery, but the largest ones we're going to focus on are in the third part of the axillary artery, or the most distal portion. Here, which I'm outlining right here, is an artery that we're not having you identify, but it's one of the larger branches of the axillary, and this is called the subscapular artery. And the reason that we care about this one is that it gives off two branches, but one that we just discussed, this one you can kind of see looping right here, which is your circumflex scapular artery. And we saw that circumflex scapular artery over here coming around laterally, and you can see it looping towards the scapular region there. Just for fun, this one that's going down here is the thoracodorsal artery, which supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle, that large superficial muscle located in the back. But it will um, head all the way, its distal tendon will head all the way towards the shoulder joint. Another set of branches from the axillary artery I want you to identify are the circumflex humoral arteries. These will wrap around the surgical neck, which is right around this region here, of the humerus. The anterior circumflex humeral artery tends to be the smaller one and it is going to wrap around anteriorly whereas the posterior which i just 
underline there, posterior circumflex humeral artery tends to be the larger one and it will wrap posteriorly around the surgical neck. It will also have a close relationship to the axillary nerve. And these circumflex humeral arteries will typically anastomose as well. Lastly, we can't discuss the arm so we were mainly focused on more superior shoulder regions, but now let's talk a little bit about the arm. And you have to uh, know that the brachial artery and veins are going to be the vascular supply or drainage in this region. At the inferior margin of the teres major, you're going to have the transition from the axillary artery into, it changes its name to the brachial artery. So if you are looking in the arm, uh, you are really focused in on the brachial artery. And this, it and its branches, so the brachial artery and its branches will supply and run throughout the arm and will end in the cubital fossa region right around here where it splits into its terminal branches, the radial and the ulnar artery. And we'll talk about this area in the next session. You can see a bit of blue here and kind of throughout, and that will be um, one of the brachial veins. Recall that there are typically paired deep veins in the limb, so whereas you would only have one brachial artery, you typically have two brachial veins. So if you see a large artery or vein in the arm, you are looking at the brachial artery and veins. Excellent, thank you for your time here, and please reach out if you have any questions.